All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One news and ahead of the French Grand Prix, we've finally got to see our first look at the upgrades teams are bringing for this weekend. Mercedes with a quite noticeable change to their front wing, but it may well be Ferrari that look to make the biggest step in performance this weekend. Very much into it, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always. First of all, just wanted to mention this, Sebastian Vettel driving a 100 year old Aston Martin. Pretty much they're trying to do everything they can to keep him actually, well, still driving for Aston Martin next year. Maybe giving him access to old like vintage cars like this is one way of doing it. But yes, yeah, so far Vettel with the fastest lap of the weekends. And um, he was actually mentioned in the press conferences as everything was happening earlier on today that uh, he does say that there was a clear intention from him to keep on going and keep on racing. Now look, whether that's with Aston Martin, that's another question. Apparently they are putting all their eggs in this basket to try and convince Vettel to stay. Will he? That's another question. If he leaves, is there really another opportunity? out there. There has been rumours about the McLaren seat. If Ricardo wasn't going to be there, could Vettel step into that seat? So like he, I'm sure, is going to keep his options open. But um, it's interesting to hear that he does want to keep on racing because there has been some questions like, you know, what is his motivation really like at the moment, being in a difficult car for like rather a few years at this point? Will Aston Martin successfully convince him to stay on for another season? Because apparently they're not looking at any other drivers. They're going, you know, balls to the wall and trying to keep Vettel there, which I guess might pay off for them. It may well not, of course. Vettel did actually mention here like he was kind of asked about these McLaren rumours and he says look I think Lana has a contract so showing some loyalty to good old Daniel Ricciardo but he says I obviously know some people there but I just think it is rumours at the moment so we shall see like uh, but yeah Aston Martin seem confident that Vettel will stick around and he seems uh, at least pretty confident as well that he'll keep on driving next year where shall it be I suppose if at all that is a question that does remain to be seen wanted to talk about this as well as we're going to discuss Ferrari today because uh, seemingly Charles Leclerc getting some of his bad luck out the way already. His, uh, his Ferrari broke down or something, it ran out of fuel or something, so that maybe is his bad luck already done and dusted for this weekend, but in fairness in Monaco, when he crashed that kind of like vintage, I think it was the loudest car or something at Monaco, or like uh, I think the brakes failed or whatever exactly it was. He put that in the wall I think at Rascas, and it didn't exactly counteract his bad luck at the Monaco Grand Prix with some of the decisions Ferrari made in that particular race, but maybe this weekend they won't have to make so many bad decisions because they could be way ahead of the field. If their upgrades work, I guess, as they intend them too. These are some of the rear wings to look at. Interesting, actually, Mercedes rear wing. Not sure if I've seen one quite this pointy. Almost like um, in previous regulation style, a lot of the new rear wings tend to be more rounded. Mercedes now have this pointier edged one, which is interesting really, because I thought the idea of the rounded wings this year was to create less turbulent air for the car behind following, but uh, maybe like Mercedes can get away with this and they think it's going to give them some sort of a performance advantage. So it looks actually rather different to what some of the other teams are going for, for example. Like no other team really has such a pointed rear wing that Mercedes seem to have right now. I guess they had to make a new one because Russell crashed and kind of hurt his one and they only had one spare that they gave to Hamilton because he had to fight through the fields. So maybe now Russell has this kind of upgraded spec one with the kind of like the flatter edge, which I think is interesting to see if that will deliver any performance. But both Red Bull, they apparently are making small changes as are Ferrari with some seemingly rather more significant changes. Firstly, let's discuss Haas. This I reckon is probably a three second a lap quicker advantage right here. They've changed this kind of on the front wing here. I think Mercedes did this as well. They changed around this, whatever this like front wing side plate effectively is. They changed around what it looks like. This is similarly what it looks like now at the top. I think Mercedes did something similar. So, I mean, yeah, I think Haas won two. No doubt about it this weekend as a result of this change. I think they also said their last major upgrade this season is going to come at the Hungaro ring, which I'm pretty sure is the next race. So after then, nothing more for Haas for the rest of the season. Now, this is what Mercedes are doing, which I mean, look, they are making some further upgrades. They've said, we've looked at recently, that a lot of their upgrades the big ones are not going to be so visible. They're going to be either in the flooring of the car or elsewhere in the car itself. This was the only thing so far that actually has been visible, which is a change to the front wing. Now, apparently this is better driver cooling, but also potentially for better cooling of the internal engine components or however exactly the internal, well, you know, airflow mechanisms work. But this is the old spec, as you can see with a kind of pride Mercedes flag. They've got rid of that one, you know, it's long since the end of June, so all the companies go back to basics. And, um, and as you can see at the front, they've kind of gone for a BMW S. It looks kind of BMW S, you know, but uh, yeah, these holes at the front are now significantly larger, allowing you'd imagine greater airflow through the car for the driver or potentially for some components as well, which uh, might be a difference maker this weekend because it's going to be hot, right? It's going to be hot in France, and uh, some people have raised concerns about not just Mercedes engine that has also suffered overheating problems so far this season, but also uh, the Ferrari, right? Which uh, it may be more prone to exploding in higher heat. So that might be a concern of them this weekend, but they might be able to get away 
away with running a lower power mode Ferrari because if their floor is much better, as I guess they seem to believe it is. Now, Mercedes aren't getting too confident this weekend. Seems like every single pundit has said that this is going to be a great weekend for them, and it probably is their best chance, potentially, before the summer break in the middle of the season. Hamilton says doesn't really know what to expect this weekend. George Russell, though, who has actually kind of been rather pessimistic, right? I think Hamilton has generally been more optimistic about their performance. Often they'll have a good weekend and Russell will be like, oh, you know, we were kind of still nowhere near. He actually says here if they have a great weekend, an exceptional weekend, I guess he means exceptional in a good way, we could be within two tenths. So it must be rather interesting, right, if he's uh, pretty confident that they could be pretty much there or thereabouts, which in fairness has kind of been where they've been recently at some of these recent tracks as well in either race pace or in qualifying, but maybe their kind of other upgrades they're making, not just this front wing change, might be a difference maker, or will Ferrari continue to pull away? They did look significantly better, especially in terms of tyre wear at Austria, and they seem to be making further changes as well. As Giuliano de Casso points out right here, significant upgrades to the Venturi tunnels inlet. So effectively the floor of the car, the way they generate downforce this year with the ground effect, they have these things called Venturi tunnels on the floor of the car, which manipulate the air in certain ways to generate downforce. Now, the rumour has it that Red Bull's Venturi tunnel set up on the floor has been much more advanced and complicated than what a lot of the other teams have gone for, and therefore they can get away with much less drag on the kind of at the upper side of the car, the front wing, the rear wing, because Red Bull's floor is so good. If Ferrari and Mercedes can catch up to how good their floor is, then maybe they can also get away with running less wing angle and potentially be quite as good or, you know, if not faster than Red Bull, as we have seen on occasion this season. So a more advanced floor, as Google loves to translate Italian, the floor word, into fund. I think it's fundy or something. But this is what is said here in the article, only on Charles Leclerc's car, actually. Rather interesting to note. Now, Sainz might take an engine penalty this weekend. So that does remain to be seen. If it does happen, though, like I mean, he's going to be starting from, well, far back in the grid, honestly, because he might need a new engine after what happened in Austria, of course. But yes, a new update to the bottom, the floor of the car, has made an appearance in France, which sees an important modification of the front area, the very critical one, for the entrance of the very important Venturi channels. Massively modifying the shape of the inlet, we'll see that in a second, that carries the air under the body, meaning changing the entire flow pattern that then produces the aerodynamic load between the central and rear parts of the car. Apparently, they kind of did some other modifications earlier at the Spanish Grand Prix, but this new spec sees and soon the Paul Ricard circuit makes it even more aggressive than the previous version, a real step that increases airflow in the revised Silverstone undercut. I guess they brought one in a couple of races ago as well, consequently moving the flow below the bottom in the most central part of the entrance of the Venturi channels. Look, this is all theory. Whether it works in reality is another question, but this is what it actually looks like here. So only on Charles Leclerc's car for now, maybe indicates the direction that, despite what Minatia Bonato says to the public about them not having a number one driver, might well indicate something, right? And this, I believe, is comparing that what they kind of used to look like at the front of the car with the newer version, with the much more, as you can see, complicated kind of a, well, inlet for the airflow right here. So I guess they believe that this more kind of complicated angle for the inlet of the Venturi tunnels will give them greater downforce. And this was kind of the key topic we talked about a few days ago, that if Ferrari can upgrade their floor and create more downforce with the ground effect from the floor, they can therefore afford to run less wing angle, front and rear wing potentially, and still gain the same amount of downforce overall, and therefore also potentially run their engines at a lower power mode. The rumour has kind of been, been going around that Ferrari are pretty much maxing out their engines because they have a bit more drag than Red Bull to try and actually catch up with them and keep up with them in these races. And maybe this will allow them to turn their engines down a little bit and actually prevent, potentially, maybe not prevent, but at least reduce the likelihood of similar blouts to what Science had in Austria happening again because one more of them and that might be their championship hopes done and dusted but yeah that's probably the most significant change that we have seen so far of the day now Ferrari apparently also bringing in a new clutch now Alfa Romeo apparently will use a new Ferrari clutch of course Ferrari powered car that is designed to improve its compromised race start so there's definitely been some suspect race starts this year from Science and I mean even like Bottas as well even though that's kind of a standard procedure with Bottas in his career but supposedly some sort of issue with the clutch there's a new version that's coming out which might improve the starts as well. So maybe that's another direction that Ferrari may well be taking in the right direction. Now, kind of on the downside potentially for Ferrari is the new power unit, which might come in this weekend. As Carlos Sainz says, it is still under evaluation whether he shall take a new one, still looking at all the available options. We also need to see how the overtaking is, how everything comes into play with the heat, tyres. Obviously, there is a chance it will happen, right? So they're not going to make this decision, it seems, immediately. They're going to wait for to see how things work out this weekend in practice, how the heat is affected in the cars, whether they need a new version of this power unit or whether they can just get away with running an older one and taking the penalty somewhat later. But it is 
going to happen at some point. And I do wonder what this means for Red Bull as well, because they seem to be on track to only use their three allocated power units this season, which is incredibly impressive. But maybe to maintain that as the second half of the season comes in, they might need to start turning down their engines a bit, which might give Ferrari and potentially Mercedes a chance to actually overtake them and score more points. But maybe Red Bull will take that gamble, thinking that with the penalties that Ferrari will have to take, it should still be advantageous to Red Bull, right? So it's always a discussion that's going to be had as the season progresses. But Ferrari do seem to be committing to the strategy of like, yeah, look, we're going to have to take more engine penalties here because of our reliability problems, but we're just going to try and be faster in the race. And this weekend will be a key test of that one, especially because of the very high temperatures that are going to happen this weekend in France. Ferrari have kind of talked about that they, okay, have ways to counter this. Like there's some ways that they can deal with these issues. And Valtteri Bottas did say that he doesn't really think that the hot weather is going to aggravate any reliability problems, which might mean that he's jinxing it rather hard and all of the cars are just going to explode this weekend. The Hasses, the Alfa Romeos, the Ferraris, they're all out of the race by lap 20. But this has been a big concern for potentially Mercedes and also Ferrari that maybe they have to run things a little bit lower than they would like to just because the heat could cause an issue for their engine and maybe this extra cooling that Mercedes seem to have might help them to a very small degree as well. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Haven't really spoken too much about Red Bull but since they are running the Jeddah spec rear wing where of course they had quite some success but back then it was when Ferrari and Charles Leclerc at the time when Verstappen won that race had a rather more draggy rear wing and since then they've changed things around so really Red Bull like kind of going back to basics here of what worked for them back in Jeddah might be a sensible move but Ferrari still probably come in as marginal favourites for this weekend's race and just to mention this in terms of average overtakes the French Grand Prix not a track in Paul Ricard that's particularly well liked but it does have at least based on the last I think four years this is not including this season so far so just the previous regulations does have uh, the second highest overtakes per track on the Canada with that I mean being second place here to Sao Paulo with other tracks in a similar boat so yes should be a good race this weekend the track is still pretty ugly to look at but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you are new as always take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time